people too high I mess around They're doing the mess around They're doing the mess around Everybody do the mess around From Studio 201 in Charleston, South Carolina It's the Sunday Night Show Hosted by Matt Gordner How's everybody doing tonight? Awesome. Uh, welcome to the Sunday Night Show. I'm your host. Uh, welcome back. This is our second episode. Yeah. That's kind of exciting. Great. I'm excited. Yeah. Uh, thank you for choosing us over Sunday Night Football. Unless, of course, you're just. This it's is Wednesday. Wednesday, and you're taking a dump. Yeah. And yeah, that's a great way to start the show, right? With that mm -hmm. image. Okay. Um, how are you doing tonight, Addison? I'm doing great. Good. Doing good. I'm wearing my second favorite sloth. Shirt. I was gonna bring that up. Yeah. yeah it's no. got this week. It's a sloth on a bicycle. On a bicycle. That's interesting. Very sloth, unique kind of shirt. They don't usually ride bikes. No, 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 no. That's interesting artwork. Only right the there. two toed sloths ride bikes. That's right. I'm two excited to see what me. next shirt is going to be. Is it still sloth? Actually, don't tell me. I'd rather be surprised. going to be surprised. Yeah. yeah. And, and in, on that note, uh, let's do the news. Because uh, they're related. <laughs> sloth equals news. Yeah, I know. And especially the news we're going to do. Um, <laughs> if you're an NFL fan, if you're a football fan, and you're watching football ever, uh, you've probably heard of this play right here. You've seen this clip. Check it out. <laughs> And if you're a Jets fan, you probably wish people would stop talking about it, right? I love football. Um, well, uh, a couple weeks ago, the Indianapolis Colts said, wait a minute, uh, we'd like to try our own version of that. And, uh, well, they, they may have helped you out here. Check it out. <laughs> yes, I think they remedied the situation. Right? I don't know. I still like the butt fumble better. What do you guys think? Butt fumble? No? But fumble it is for now, although the Colts made a valiant effort. Um, Chevy, Chevy, uh, the automaker, the American automaker, um, has released an ad campaign where real life people are having real life reactions. As opposed to fake people. As opposed fake to fake or actors. Yes. <laughs> well, they're having real life reactions to Chevy's newest lineup of cars. Um, Let's check out that commercial. Sit in the seat, it makes me think of a BMW. I feel like I'm in a Lexus. You would think that this was a brand new Audi. It's like a luxury car. It feels kind of like an Infiniti. Very similar to Range Rover. It's pretty high tech. Yeah, it is. It reminds me of the Mercedes. I can just picture the CEO of BMW or the people in charge of like Mercedes and Audi. They have CEOs also, I'm not taking them out. Just sitting at their desk with the plans. And just, we have to start over. This can't, this can't happen. This is it. Back to the drawing board. Really dramatic like that. I can picture that happening. <laughs> but, um, uh, totally unrelated to that, Joe Biden recently announced that he will not be running for president. That's a, He's dropped out of the race. Sad. I don't know if he was ever in the race, but he's officially declared that he is <laughs> not going to be a part of it, which is sad because I like Joe Biden. And he's a great Joe guy. Biden. Yeah, he's a, he's a good guy, yeah. yeah. And um, But anyway, um, he said about... Hillary Clinton's campaign, he had a quote. What did he say? They are the opposition, not the enemies. Yes, so he, I think he's trying to say here, like, let's stop treating them like the enemies, yeah. obviously. I read really far into that. Mm -hmm. yeah. And then, uh, to which Donald Trump added, <clears throat> Personally, I would rather run against Hillary because her record is so bad. It's my Donald Trump impression. <laughs> Forgot the hair. Because yeah. <laughs> it's so bad. Because um, Donald Trump always likes to chime in. Of course. Sort of thing. Yeah. But uh, yeah, we're sad to see Joe Biden's not running. Anyway, um, here's something Trump might like. The FBI, not too long ago, I think it was actually recently. Very recently. It was recently, yeah. We're doing the news. It's recent. The <laughs> FBI discovered a tunnel leading from Tijuana, Mexico to San Diego, California. It's about half a mile in length. And uh, within it, they found complex lighting system, air duct thing, ventilation, uh, railroad tracks. And transporting, what they were transporting was about, was marijuana. And what they confiscated was actually 20,000 pounds of marijuana. That's uh, can a you lot believe of that? marijuana. That's a lot of, uh, <laughs> yes, that. <laughs> and, uh, well, and of course, Donald Trump felt the need to chime in here. Uh, check out what he said. We have to build a fence. And it's got to be a beauty. Who can build better than Trump? I build. No, I don't, I don't think he heard me correctly. They, they built a tunnel. They, like, dug, and they went under where a fence would be. Like, they just went under, and, you know, so... 
I saw the other day on television, people just walking across the board. They're walking. The military's standing there holding guns, and people just walking right in front, coming into our country. Remember in elementary school, when people played, or I guess middle school also, Capture the Flag? Oh, yeah. Where you'd have, like, a group of people on the other side, and they're, like, huddled together, pretending they have the flag and running across. Oh, yes. Meanwhile, there's that one, like... There's like the, the sneaky kid on the other side, and he actually has the flag. I feel like that's, it's going to fly there. <laughs> that's sort of like a, you know, capture the flag, war on drugs, things like that. Um, so maybe, Mr. Trump, you want to reconsider? But I'm leading in the poll by a landslide with the Hispanics, which is a great honor for me. Whatever you say, Donald. <laughs> There's so many. I think next week we should do just memes on his hair. His toupee. What's he under can't the even toupee? Call it hair. You're right, you're right. It's <laughs> hair piece. Hair substitute. <laughs> it's like hair. It is what hair is to like McNuggets are to chicken. What? Yes. We're going to move on now. Uh, President Obama. <laughs> President Obama has suggested that there be some sort of insurance thing implemented. Uh, the way car insurance works for cars, gun insurance or liability insurance would work for people who want to own guns. And this is fair because. His argument is, well, guns are, no really, are really no less hazardous than cars, if not they're more hazardous. So people should have to take responsibility for their actions, and this is a better way to kind of uh, handle situations that go wrong. So if you guns. shoot yourself in the foot, you're insured? You're insured if you shoot someone else in the foot. <laughs> okay. You're insured. Or I think along the lines, I don't really read too far into it, or maybe he hasn't. Uh, we're, we're waiting for that to develop. <laughs> but um, when I, I first glanced at it, I, I pictured that looking something like this. Oh God! Not a fucking this thing. Every fucking Wednesday, it's just some shit like this happens. God. Like a good neighbor, State Farm is there. Don't worry, Mark. You're covered. Oh. You're okay. All right. Well. It was spectacular. Thank you. So, we drew straws as to who got to be the dead guy. Well, the dead guy's the best role. Who got to say, State Farm is there. <laughs> anyway, uh, back to actual important news. Um, the other day in North Charleston, a man was accused of sexual assault. Pretty serious stuff. And uh, police actually found him in a Waffle House uh, oh, where yep. his mother had called 911 saying that her son, the man who was accused, needed medical attention. Why did he need medical attention? Well, it turned out uh, the woman whom he was act interacting with uh, actually bit off his tongue during the exchange. All right. And uh, he went to the Waffle House without That's where a tongue. every person should go when they're missing their That's tongue. That's the go-to after you've committed a crime. You can't even eat the waffles anymore. What's the point of going to Waffle House? What's the meat at a Waffle House, Mom? <laughs> I mean, and he needs, anyway. Um, uh, the police report, I, we were able to, yeah. Uh, as it reads, uh, the woman who had, you know, she's being treated for uh, the attack. Uh, the mother is in questioning, because why not? Uh, the man is in custody, as he should be, yes. and the tongue is at large. <laughs> I tried really hard on that. <laughs> um, some less important news. Uh, I was flying from Newark to Charleston a couple weeks ago. It's a flight that I make pretty often, and uh, it was delayed. Because what the fuck else is new? Yeah. Um, so I checked my United app. They have that on the phone. You can do that and see why it's delayed. And it said, uh, well, here, check out what it said. And I thought to myself, okay, better safe than sorry. Check the plane out. Take your time. Make sure it's okay. You know, we want to we fly safe. So I figured I'd check back in a few minutes, which I did. And uh, they had changed it to this. And now I thought, okay, maybe the gate agent got it wrong. Maybe there was a miscommunication the first time because uh, broken plane sounds a lot like late in Dutch food. Yeah. They sound Clearly. similar. So if one gets the radio, hey, the plane's broken. Okay, the crew's late. Yeah. Got it. Um, so I figure, okay, now, now I'm interested and I still have nothing to do because I'm sitting in Newark Airport. What the fuck else is there to do in Newark Airport? Uh, so I figured I'd check back in a few minutes, which I did, and they had updated the app to this. <laughs> I'm thinking, okay, does anybody know what's going on here? I just know what's going on. What are they, are, are they trying to say that the mechanical problems scared away the crew and caused operational difficulties for 330 minutes or however many, it actually said that, that was a mistake. Um, and, and it got me thinking, why, why can't they ever just be on time? Uh, which actually brings us
to our newest segment here on the Sunday Night Show called The Delay Board. If you're a frequent flyer, you may encounter delays on a regular basis, and like me, you may be tired of hearing the same old reasons for why the airline industry can't seem to get their shit together. You know, I fly a lot. I fly like twice a year to go to California to see my dad, and I can honestly say that I've had more good encounters with airlines than bad. Really? Like, I've been upgraded to first class more than I've had a delayed flight. See, for me, it's just been a storm of awfulness. Oh, no, that's how it is for most people. But yeah, okay, yeah. I'm well, then I'm awfulness. hoping you can weigh in here because I don't know yeah. if this, this is yeah. very, um, this, this next segment light. is very <laughs> anti-airline, but we're going to go with it. Um, anyway, the way this is going to work is uh, Addison and I will um, try to come up with better uh, reasons for the same old excuses that the airlines give us for why flights are delayed or late or canceled or anything like that. So Mark is going to read out the uh, the reason they would give us, and then we're going to try to figure out a better way to say it. Let's do it. A better way to, ex to convey <laughs> that bad news. All right, so... Director Mark, do you have our... <clears throat> the first one is, delayed due to icing on the runway. Icing, because the plane's wheels can't get through that buttercream frosting on the track. You wanna build a snowman? I wanna build a sleigh. <laughs> I never see what if they just played this, and then people just, oh, well, it's it, ice on the runway. Let's go yeah, well, snow. if you guys play Frozen, it's cool. We won't be mad. Then, yeah, we can. All right. It we'll, makes the crowd happy. It puts you in a good mood, that's for sure. It does. Yeah. It does put you and in a good mood. And forget about their delayed oh, flight. Oh, bad mood for me, really. Uh, do we have another one? The second one is delayed due to equipment shortage. <laughs> equipment shortage. So this means they don't have a plane. Yep. We, like they just don't, like <laughs> we're just short. Yeah. Sorry guys, we have nothing necessary to fly a plane right now. We didn't we didn't think you'd all show up for your flight. We thought we'd we'd sneak this one. Yeah, this is super yeah, we're, super awkward. This is a bit awkward because we yeah. now you have to just sit here and there's just nothing you can f***ing do about it. No. Enjoy <laughs> en enjoy the terminal. Have fun. Yeah. Thanks for flying Delta. <laughs> Thanks for flying United. <laughs> <laughs> okay. We got another one. You're going to like this one. It Am is a uh, late arrival of the aircraft to be used for the flight from a previous flight. <laughs> what? Wait, wait, wait. What? I'm not messing with you. That is an excuse that these airlines that, use. Wait, say it, say it again. Late arrival of the aircraft to be used for the flight from a previous flight. I'm so not going to lie? It just, like, it just didn't show up? Or it's showing up, we're not, like... So they went all like Malaysia Airlines. There's just no one knows pretty where much, it is. They just uh, dis pretty much disappeared. All right. They've never seen they just it again. solid. That yeah. Well, I feel really reassured about airlines right now. Late. Okay, we'll give that one a. Let's move on. That's good. Give that old asterisk. Give oh, yeah. We'll put it. We'll <laughs> circle back to that asterisk. one. <laughs> uh, next is airline glitches. Actually, yeah, I was reading about this one. According to USA Today, this is the like number one cause for airline delays. Is airline glitches, and that's all they say about that it. That. That's the most vague right? example that I've heard ever. Or I, like excuse for, and I've never, it's funny, they say it's the most popular one, but I've never actually heard them come over to the loudspeaker and say, yeah. we're having glitches. Hey guys, uh, you need to wait four extra hours because of a glitch. We, we've glitched, so <laughs> bear with us. They, it's just, like a, it's they like, just ran out of good uh, That only happens I think in they've Star run out, Trek. which is why we, I mean, actually, I can't even come up with anything better than that. <laughs> I think it's just a glitch. Gl they went like, <laughs> like Halo 1, where it like, Freezes. I don't know. I actually play Halo, but I don't play Halo, but I see what you're saying. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Uh, so we'll we'll circle back to that one also. Uh, delayed due to internal issues. Internal issues. Internal issues. Internal issues. Internal issues. Like they're feeling. <laughs> yeah. No. 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 The pilot's going through a divorce Not at those home. Issues? No, no. Internal issues, though, like. Not there. Coming to terms with yourself. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> All airline staff are having midlife crises. Realizing the flight that. is delayed. <laughs> the, okay. So we'll, that, that's a no? On, right, on, we're gonna go on about, Dana D. Kane? I'm going to call okay. BS on that one. I do like Dana D. Kane, though. Me too, yeah. Great song. That was, that was my bad. I misunderstood Middle the school. situation. Next is delay due to personnel shortage. Personnel sh Okay. Where did they go? What are they doing? Just lunch ran a little bit long? Mm-hmm. Joining the Mile High Club, just a little little tug in the break room. Yeah, jerking yep. off in the bath. Just it jerking happens. off. In, yeah. And you get a pin hour. if you join the Mile High Club. So, <laughs> I mean, it's been maybe it's just yeah. Maybe it was a union thing. They have to. Definitely a union thing. Yeah. yeah, it's always a union thing. <laughs> <laughs> All right, and then I guess uh, we have time for one more. Delayed due to air traffic control. 
You'll like it. Get it? Get it? Cause Top Gun. I right. can't control. It's yeah. <laughs> yeah. And on that note, uh, that's all the time we have for the delay board. We'll be right back. on a new show. A uh, golf show? Yeah, this week's episode's all about Shaft Angle. You know, it's all about Shaft Angle. Alright, man. Uh, yeah? Well, take it easy. You too. See ya. Welcome back. Uh, my guest tonight is six feet seven inches tall. Same. <laughs> He's originally from Greensboro, North Carolina, um, where he was a very successful basketball player in high school, helping his team to two back-to-back -back state titles. Two. Very right? impressive. Pretty impressive. Uh, please welcome to the show Donovan Gilmore. Thank you. Thank you. I'm really honored, man. Thank you. Thank you for being here. Thank you for joining no us problem. tonight. Um, so, six foot seven. Yeah. That's pretty yeah. tall. Yeah, I mean, in the <laughs> basketball world, I mean, it's not that tall. You know, the average height in the NBA is six foot seven. So. Yeah. That's just like, I'm down here at like 5'10". <laughs> and then, but, uh, okay, so... You're on the team, obviously. That's why I hear you want to talk about basketball. Um, how's it looking this year? Because I know last year wasn't, like, the best, but what are you guys looking forward to this year? Well, obviously, last year we faced a little adversity, you know, winning nine games, having, you know, me, myself, being a young guy, being a freshman starter, and, you know, we had our senior point guard, Anthony Stead, fall to an MCL injury, and a job of rule was never healthy, but... I think this year we brought in five guys that can you know, add a little to our scoring side. Last year we were a very good defensive team, but this year we'll be a great defensive team, and I think we'll pull out more wins. Yeah, and obviously you had that huge coaching change also, which is uh, something else to adapt to besides the change in players and obviously the injury like that. How do you think the team is adapting to the new coach, and do you think it's going to be an improvement this year in that respect? Well, Coach Grant is an amazing coach. I mean, I think not only just Coach Grant, the whole staff, I think we have one of the best staffs in the league. I mean. They're all like in and every day, film. They're always there, and it's not just about basketball. They actually care about you as a person. So we've it just makes of, the environment that much yeah, better. Yeah, we've done a lot of team bonds, and we actually had a sports psychologist come in, and we took a different approach this year. Really? Mm -hmm. Okay. Now, you obviously had the titles in high school, yeah. which I guess contributed to uh, you playing basketball in college. What was that like, winning back-to-back -back state titles at, you know, in that environment? Oh, man. Well, high school, man, I went to Wesleyan Christian Academy, you know, out of High Point, North Carolina. And it was a big time basketball area. You know, two back to back state championships was really hard to come by. But I had some great assets on my team. Theo Penton, who's at UNC. Yeah. Harry Giles, who's an outstanding player in high school. He's at Oak Hill. Um, Deshante Carlock, Jacquel Richmond, who's actually at um, UNCW. So I had some good pieces. Yeah. And then obviously, so did you, what, at what point in high school did you say, like, okay, I definitely want to do this in college? This is something I'm skilled at and I enjoy. <laughs> well, actually, or did you know it before? Or did you know, like, in middle school, you're like, hey, basketball's my thing. That's what I want to do. Uh, growing up, football was actually my first love. And really? I was actually really good in track and field. I had like a five-inch growth spurt between ninth and 10th grades, and then I just got into basketball. Every yeah. coach was like, you got to come out here, you got to come out. Five-inch growth spurt? Yeah, I went from like <laughs> Was five it like overnight? Of, basically, yeah. It was <laughs> now, crazy. What, what position in football? I was a defensive end wide receiver. Okay, well, I'll say wide receiver, five-inch growth spurt. Yeah. It was, that, that could help, you know? Yeah, but my frame was a little thin, like, at one point, I was like 6'4", 100 pounds, so... Wow, that's... Yeah, that's yeah. thin, yeah. <laughs> so, um, what, what are you looking to do after college, either with basketball or without basketball? Well, potentially, you know, play overseas or NBA or whatever my own career could take me. I want to play as long as I can, but I actually want to be a physician's assistant. I want to go to PA school, and I'm actually a public health major now, so I'm trying oh, to get cool. those things arranged. But definitely stick with sports, maybe just not in the in the playing aspect. For sure, for sure. Like, if I can't continue to play, I, I want to be around players, maybe a strength conditioning coach or maybe an actual college coach. I don't know. Now, you said overseas. Is that, like, basketball in other countries? Yeah. Okay. What are the? So it's not NBA. It would be? It's like the Euro League. Okay. I guess, and I, I remember seeing that in the Olympics, but... I don't want to know anything else besides that. Like, is that a common thing to like go overseas after? It's very common, especially for mid-major players. Like, we actually have a former player, Andrew Goutlock, 
He plays over there. Jeremy Simmons. They all play at the College of Charleston. They're all in other countries now, having a great career. Really. It's, it's a, it's a, yeah, it's a great way to like see the world and also yeah. do what you love yeah, and obviously do what you're good at. It's amazing. Exactly. So, um, well, kind of moving away from basketball, we have okay. uh, a game to play. An it, a game. it really is, has nothing to do with basketball whatsoever. <laughs> I was looking for a segue in there and I just couldn't find one. But um, yeah, obviously you know that politics are starting to heat up a little bit. It's not my favorite topic. Mm, me either. Me either, yeah. Not, yeah. But uh, one of our writers, Harrison, thought it'd be funny to... Uh, well, Harrison, you can explain it. So basically what we have, we have quotes from potential 2016 president c- candidates and then quotes from famous movie villains. And so <laughs> I'll read the <laughs> Wow. And you have to guess if it was either a presidential candidate or if it was a movie, or a movie villain. And you just have to guess either one, you know, candidate or villain. But, you know, kudos and double points, I guess, if you can guess which candidate said it or which villain said it. It's a very thin line. <laughs> it's a very thin line. Often interchangeable. I know, I have a feeling I know what Addison is going to say for a lot of them, but <laughs> well, I guess we'll be surprised. So we're like, are we competing against each other? Or are we working together? I think, you know, we can, we can, like, you know, we'll each have our personal points. Okay. So I'll just, we'll go down the line and we'll ask. Okay. And I guess if one person can't get it, we go to the next person until someone gets it. Or so we're answering one at a time? Or can we just blurt it out, like, just blurt or is it Jeopardy style? We have to, like, we'll just blur it out. We're going to just blurt it out? All right, cool. You, you cool with that? I'm cool with that. All right, so are we coming up with a basketball game? <laughs> or a, a football game? I didn't know that. You were you played football. That's pretty cool. You're actually active as well. Really? A little theater. Well, you're so talented. That is, that is, that is quite <laughs> He's the, a triple uh, threat. the resume. Football, He's, basketball, and acting. That is the real triple threat. What right more there. could you ask for? What did you, I guess before we get into that, what did you act in? Uh, my biggest production probably was the Susical. Susical the musical. <gasps> Who yeah. did you play? Yeah. <laughs> I was Yertle the Turtle. Nice. <laughs> that is the best. I mean, Dream we, we could end the show right there. Yertle the <laughs> Turtle. Good note. Yeah. Donovan but, uh, Gilmore. <laughs> all right. Yeah, so let's... That's awesome. Uh, let. It, <laughs> that's cool. You should go out of the theater department. Yeah, they, they need male actors. We're really mm-hmm. actually... I'm a theater major. Addison's a theater minor. Mm-hmm. We're struggling for male actors sometimes. Mm. But uh, yeah, all right. So we will get on with the game, though, for now. Um, I guess just shout it out. Okay, yeah. So the first quote is, You are unwise to lower your defense. Donald Trump. Ben Carson. <laughs> Darth Vader. Uh, it's Darth Vader. Is it actually? Yeah. I was close. Oh, wow. <laughs> I had no clue. On. Um, I, I, sp- I pictured the lightsaber there. But, yeah, of course. Uh, you are unwise. So- no, wait. Not bad. You are <laughs> a Vader. very, very proud wacko bird. Jafar from Aladdin. Um, it's definitely a villain. I don't know. Trump. No, it's actually Ted Cruz. <laughs> <laughs> wow. I was thinking because the bird in Aladdin, you know? Oh, yeah. That the actually parent. makes sense. You ever seen uh, Ted the Cruz? next one. Yeah, Put this right. helicopter on the ground. I left my sunglasses in the limo. I need those sunglasses. We need to go back. <laughs> Donald Trump. Donald Trump. Donald Trump. Hillary Clinton. <laughs> <No>. <laughs> really? Yeah. You can see why we all chose Trump, though. Yes. Um, join the dark side. You, oh, that's the quote? Yeah, join the dark side. That's the quote. Oh, that's Marco Rubio. Donald Trump. Donald gonna, Trump. <laughs> it's Darth Vader, but I was going to say a joke that it was Donald Trump, because I thought everybody knew that one was Darth Vader. So we'll skip <laughs> that Vader. one. Was something that was encouraged by the adversary. Wait, say that one again? That was something that was encouraged by the adversary. He's getting harder. I'll take Hillary Clinton for 300. <laughs> Is that our final answer? Wait, on. <laughs> I'll go Bernie on that one. I got nothing for this one. It's actually Ben Carson. Wow. Really? <clears throat> really? Wait, what was the, say one more time. Uh, was something that was encouraged by the adversary. All right, Ben Carson. I'll, yeah. It was when he was talking about, uh, he said how uh, Darwin was encouraged by the devil. Oh, yes, of course. Right. The common ideal. That, De- definitely. Yes. He actually spoke at my high school. Ben Carson? Ben Carson? Yeah, like two weeks before graduation. Oh, but I guess, bef- okay. That's kind of cool. Did he tell you that Darwin was influenced by the devil? Probably. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Was that before, I guess that was before he was on the presidential ticket? Or was he talking yeah, about it, it back before. then? Because I graduated in 2014, so. Okay. Well, he didn't mention it at all, did he? Mm-mm. Okay, yeah. That's Next, kind of cool. Next one. They, they never learn such a pity. Bernie Sanders talking about Republicans. 
Jeb Bush on Democrats? He's actually the Dark Lord Voldemort. <laughs> wow. I feel like we're leaning too much on Paul. We have to get back to like the movie thing. Lord and Voldemort. Can these guys talk about anything other than their desire to go to war? Bernie Sanders. Yeah, there we go. Yeah. Yeah. That's like the double point. Well, give us a chance to guess, man. Yeah. Come on. Let's see. Oh, by all means, move at a glacial pace. You know how that thrills me. Elsa. <laughs> the evilest oh, no, who's villain the... in all of yeah. Disney. From Frozen. Okay, okay. We made a Frozen joke earlier, so I was just building off that. Or maybe it's later. I don't know. We're not taping this show in order. Um, <laughs> Kevin's, <laughs> Kevin, our TD's back there scratching his head. I'm going to go with <sighs> Ursula from The Little Mermaid. What do you got? I'll second that. Ursula. <laughs> Ursula. <laughs> it's actually Miranda Presley from The Devil Wears Prada. Oh. Wow. Mm. Now now we're going. Okay, now it's good. I thought these were Disney villains. I need to watch more Netflix. Right? Oh. <laughs> I just guess I assumed that all villains were Disney. Um, next well, Darth Vader. <laughs> True. <laughs> I know my behavior can be erratic sometimes. That's a trick question. Donald Trump. I'm going for the screen pass here. Donald, Donald Trump. Trump. Donald Trump? Is that our final answer? Yeah. I feel yes. like it's actually Patrick Bateman from American Psycho. <laughs> Trick wow. question. All right, well done, Harrison. I, I gotta give you a heads up or a, a hand on this one, but yeah, let's let's keep rolling. Let's go all the way to the end. Oh, some more quotes for this. You have how many? Let's let's do let's do two more. Okay. We have time for two more. Okay. Oh, people don't always say what they're thinking. They just see it. They just see to it that you don't advance in life. Jack Dawson from Titanic. <laughs> um, Plankton from Spongebob the movie <laughs> You clarified from Spongebob, Spongebob the movie yeah. I got nothing I'll change one. my answer to that one <laughs> That's actually Hannibal Lecter Is it really? Yeah. <laughs> it's close Yeah, that's all, that's all the ones we have right now point. Yeah, I think yeah. so But I, was that like 90-10? Like, you guys got 90% of that wrong? I'd say we got about 90%. We got, yeah, I think we got, we got yeah. one right. I got one right. I think we got, we got off to a hot start, and then it just, it was ice cold. Were any of those like actually Elsa? Donald Trump? Uh, the first one, I, one of them was Donald Trump, actually, I think. Okay. We were expecting a lot of Trump, but... I was, yeah, yeah I mean, I'm not gonna lie. I tried to actually keep it back on the Trump, because I thought it was, it was too, like, that's what everyone was gonna say. Obviously, yeah. I knew Addison was just, she had Trump, like, just <laughs> Trump. Trump, well, just know. all on a note. Trump yeah. card. Her yeah. Hey. <laughs> right. Well, um, lastly, before we go, uh, when is the season opener for the College of Charleston? Or the home opener, I should say. Um, well, we have South Carolina State, um, 13th, November 13th. Okay. November 13th. Yep. And uh, when does the season start officially? Well, we don't want to overlook the exhibition game, which is next Thursday. Absolutely. November 5th. And is that home? It is. Okay, so next Thursday, November 5th. What time? 7 o'clock. At 7 o'clock. TD Arena. At TD, TD Arena. Arena. Yep. I'll be there. I'll be, will be there. I'll be there. I yeah. know James yeah. will be there. He loves basketball. James actually did your bio. He's a big fan. He follows CFC basketball a lot. Oh, He's our that. sound supervisor over there. He's also <laughs> on the double bass sometimes. But uh, all right, that's all we have time for. Thank you very much, Thank you. Donovan, for stopping by. Thank you. Maybe we'll have you back on sometime. Thank Good you. luck to CFC basketball. Woo! Welcome back. Uh, we have lots more in store for you tonight. How are you doing, Addison? You know, I'm doing great, but I am a little tired. I was just at Starbucks, and they were out of pumpkin spice lattes. No. Can you believe that? That's terrible. You know? That's, that's, you're just riding the basic train now? I am. We're riding I am riding the basic train. Basic I don't know if you've ever had one, but they're delicious. I have not had one. They're and so actually, good. that reminds me of the topic we're going to do for this week's video workshop. Um, so, if, are you familiar with the character, the television character, Ari Gold? Ari Gold from Entourage. From Entourage, yes, yeah, the HBO yes. show. Uh, he's portrayed by Jeremy Piven, if you're not familiar with him. He plays basically a Hollywood super agent who's got major anger issues. And uh, we, we think he disagrees. We think he finds the basic situations frustrating as well. So uh, for this week's video workshop, we're going to take some basic scenarios, as provided by our director, Mark, and uh, we're going to see how Ari reacts, and then 
will have like 10 seconds to chime in as well. Yeah, and by basic, you mean basic? I mean like, like that's so basic. Like just, just absolutely basic. All right. Like you pass by on the street and you're like, you want to say it, but then you don't want to start yeah, yeah, yeah. that right. thing. But sometimes you do. <laughs> um, okay, so our All first right. one. Our first one, off of what Addison has just said, is pumpkin spice lattes. Pumpkin spice lattes. They're delicious. <laughs> Seriously, smoke more weed. I, where do I even begin? Like <laughs> Pumpkin just... spice lattes. If you're not wearing a vest and brown riding boots, are you even drinking your pumpkin spice latte? If you're not drinking your right, you're not you're doing it wrong. Yeah. So. Alright, well before people out there who are drinking pumpkin spice lattes get offended, let's go on to our next one. Okay. <laughs> uh, talking about studying abroad. You didn't think to bring it up in the fucking staff meeting? An email? No. A yellow fucking sticky just, something? Think, talking about studying abroad. Talking not actually. Yeah. I'm thinking about I'm, I was really studying thinking about going to like Spain. Ireland or Spain. I want to go to Spain. I hear so bad. I hear Barcelona is really nice this Barcelona. time of year. I wanted to go to South Africa to help the children. <laughs> Save the children. Save them, yeah. But we're gonna, I'm going to get I'm going to get so much experience. I hear Paris is really Oh nice. gosh. You you guys are not right. anyway. Uh, <laughs> next one is people who go to the gym but don't really work out. Oh my god. Somebody better do fucking something or tomorrow you will be working for fucking Lloyd. You can go to the gym and Instagram it and all that really matters is if people think you're if you didn't, out. If you didn't Instagram it, you didn't go to the you gym. You did not go to the gym. So even no. if you just like, that Instagram. actually, you know what? I don't even go to the gym and that bothers me. And <laughs> I, think, I think that keeps me out of the gym is people who get credit for going to the gym who didn't actually do a workout. Yeah, no, it's not didn't happen. Picture didn't happen. Uh, the next one is uh, sitting at a study table then taking a Starbucks break. Get the fuck out of here. Get out of here. First of all, no studying gets done at a study table. No, and all that Netflixing, let net, Netflixing, Netflixing is. I don't. We'll have to get someone to see if that's an actual word. But that's just hogs the bandwidth, and it takes away from other people's actual exactly. study. Exactly. Or they're not going back and forth from Starbucks, and they're taking the Netflix with them on the phone. Because they always they have multiple a devices. They're streaming on multiple devices. That's what it is. <laughs> all right, it's right, really the heart of the down, problem is Netflix. Down. Okay. Down here. Um, <laughs> next is up. Snapchat <laughs> geotags. I hate them all, and yes, I want to see them destroyed. Snapchat geotags. So all your friends on Snapchat can know just where you're getting plastered. I like when people like make an event out of the fact that there's a new geotag. Like, new geotag! I'm still in the same place. I'm in the same exact place But you can see I it before. in a different way. <laughs> it's on Snapchat. <laughs> all right. I don't get it. I think Ari said it, but... <laughs> Next is BuzzFeed or BuzzFeed quizzes as a whole. AKA what I do in class. AKA the least reliable source of news in the world. Besides I this show. Of course. Can't pass microeconomics, but I can tell you which type of Disney princess I am. <laughs> that's and so, that's a fact. That's so true. <laughs> With that's, 27 reasons why Kim Kardashian is actually not as stupid as everyone thinks. The pressing matters here. I haven't actually seen that one, but I'm sure that it's out there somewhere. <laughs> I haven't read that one either. But. Yeah. The we'll next see. one is uh, star tattoos. Really? 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 Really. Star tattoos are like the 90s version of the current infinity tattoo. Where, star tattoo where? Um, Lower back. Everywhere. I mean, the, the, the tramp tell, star tell, tattoo. On the ankle, on the wrist. Lower back. On the, yeah. <laughs> the, oh, the ankle. I got, I got it on my ankle because my the speed Because my, my grandpa had an ankle. Yeah. <laughs> he died. <laughs> He took it to a dark place, but it was still kind of funny. <laughs> it's true, it's true. I once saw a star in the sky, and then that same day, I discovered... That I have an ankle. And I wanted to <laughs> make the moment. Oh, please stop it. <laughs> all right, okay. all right, all right. Next might offend a lot of people, but... I guess we haven't been the there already? Here we go. Uh, it is Mean Girls. It's like high school, E. You can't fuck the prom queen until she finds out her best friend jerked you off underneath the bleachers. You're gonna you're taking the basic side. I love who doesn't love the movie Mean Girls. Okay, I say the movie is not an issue, but it's the the fact that when girls go to quote the movie, they and then you have like a bunch of people in the room who didn't see the movie. They're like, "What the f are you talking about?" And you're they're in like, a room. "Mean Girl, like Mean Girls, obviously." If you're in a room with people who haven't seen Mean Girls, then you're in the wrong room. Everybody should have seen. <laughs> you're in a room. Then you're in a senior citizen's home. <laughs> and last but certainly not least is selfies and selfie sticks. Tell me. Why, in God's name, is this happening? You know, I don't really mind. I think selfie sticks are very useful for traveling, but it's the fact that you can see them in bars now. Yeah, it, that's not a place for a selfie stick. It's not. That just added, it doesn't it? It's just a little weird. It's I dangerous. Think, I think it fits in like an amusement park. 
because the amusement park crowd is the kind of crowd that has selfie sticks, and that's an appropriate place where you would need that kind of picture. Yes. But, yeah, I'm just not feeling the uh, the selfie stick in the bar. Selfie stick the in the club. Selfie stick at the club. See, that's a weird thing. It's selfie a stick thing at the now airport. Too. Like, oh, I'm taking the selfie of me in the delay board. About to get on the plane. About it's to delayed. On, but just kidding, not going to get on the plane, so I'm going to take selfies with my selfie stick. I bet they actually sell them in airports, like at those little kiosks. Oh, no, where you get the neck pillows, too? Yeah, the, oh, the neck pillows. The neck, neck pillows are right next to the selfie I'm in sticks. No, no, I'm in favor of the neck pillow. Well, yeah, I mean, who is it? It's, it's just comfortable, a good, it's, it's a useful. good thing, yeah. It's so logical. we'll end on neck, or neck pillows? Yeah. All right, and, <laughs> and we'll be right back. <laughs> we'll take it from there. He has counted to infinity twice. He can judge a book by its cover, but he doesn't, because that's just gauche. If he were paid a penny for his thoughts, he would be owed seven trillion dollars. When he takes the road less traveled, it immediately becomes an interstate. I don't always give to a university, but when I do, I give to the College of Charleston. Stay boundless, my friends. Checkmate. Welcome back. Um, it's time for, I think, the, the part of the show where we do the musical guest. It thing. is that part of the show. So uh, my guest tonight, he is a sophomore here at the college. He's actually the president of the Biking Club, which is interesting. But we're here to talk to him about his music and his album, which he just released this past summer. Yep. Uh, please welcome to the show, Carson Keeter. Hello. How are you? Oh, I'm so good. How are you? Thank you for being here. Hey, thanks doing for having well. me. Doing well. Addie, how you doing? I'm doing great over here. I'm That's excited. So that is so good. Yes. So, music and bike club. Love them. Interesting combination. <laughs> Love it. Yeah. Which one Which one do you like better? I hate to put you on the... That's, that's actually kind of me. That's, that's, that's a tough right question, away. but I think I can answer it. Uh, I've been doing music longer than I have been riding bikes. Really? So, I will say music. <laughs> and also, I listen to music while I'm riding bikes, and riding bikes without music is like... I, do you ever play music while you're riding a bike? Um, I've, I've been thinking about it. Thinking about it. Follow-up like, question. Mm. Do you write music about bikes? Oh, there's this one song. It has no lyrics, right? It's just <laughs> it's just instrumental, okay? But if I listen to it... And if you listen to it, you'll be like, oh, that's... That's about that's a bike. That's about bikes, yeah. <laughs> yeah. I really want to hear this song. <laughs> I'll, I'll play it for you. I guess sometime soon. Okay, yeah. well, yeah, I'm we're gonna so have you uh, perform a little bit later. Yes. Actually, coming up pretty soon. But um, <clears throat> before we do that, talk about your style of music, what you do. Yeah, so uh, I make music, uh, and it's on a on an acoustic guitar. Uh, and a lot of people think that the music that I make is folk music, so I just go with that. It's folk. It's <laughs> okay. Folk music. What would you say it is if it's not folk? Music? I would just say that it's it's a music by Carson Keeter. Really? There's, there's so does really it's it's. Has yet to be it's placed in the genre. genre. No, bold. I mean, I guess if you were to compare it to like, because that was a bold statement. We no, <laughs> well, it's just. I mean, I didn't say it was good. <laughs> <laughs> okay, he's now he's backing up. Uh, I think if you were to compare it to like the old timey kind of stuff, it would sound pretty the same. Okay. So, so like, folk. But it's all done on the acoustic guitar. All acoustic guitar uh, on the uh, record I just made. Record album. Whatever. Record album. I like record. I'll say record. Sticking with old school. Sure. <laughs> uh, it was guitar. Banjo, um, ukulele, and mandolin, and I played all those instruments on it. Really? Uh, and I sang too on most of the tracks. Um, so it's I play a little bit of everything. You well, know? that's awesome. Yeah. Uh, it's really good. Banjo. If you want to learn one instrument, banjo. banjo. Is it hard to learn? No. It's so and how easy. does that compare to the ukulele? Because the ukulele, I actually see people walking around with. Not even like a little bit close. Not even a little. No. So that's how much I know about no. music. I don't. I mean. I got an education. We had Alessandro on last week, yeah, good two guy. weeks ago, good and uh, he gave me this whole thing about electronic music. So yeah. now it's oh man, I know nothing about electronic music. I don't do get I. it. You know? Well, I do now, but I yeah, <laughs> Alessandro informed us. But I now it's going to be folk music slash music by Carson slash Keener. music. Yeah. All right. So uh, you want to move right into that? Yeah. Yeah. We're looking I can forward do to that. hearing you play. Let's uh, let's switch right over to that. I fell in love with a girl in the sunshine Her hair was as golden as the rays But I had a prior engagement to the moonlight We 
Which is why I can't see her ways And I wish I got up and said something But her beauty was too much to bear So I turned my head and then I realized You can't treat love like the tortoise and the so I got up and I looked her in the eye They were bluer than the sky above With not a single cloud obstructing her eyesight And her voice was as delicate as a the girl and the sunshine no one was watching it was only us three then the moon came and said what are you doing don't you know you belong to me and I said moon I've never seen so much beauty in one place Even at the tallest mountain The sun's greatest jewel he must have misplaced She's got the smile of ten sunshine That little star can no longer come Fine, you've got your girl on one condition You must give up your sight How am I supposed to see her beauty When all I can see Opened my eyes in a way never done before. And I said to the moon, There's something that you need to know. Since when do you think that love is purely eyesight? I'll love her even if I can't see her glow. And the moon stormed off in a great wave of envy. Then things slowly began to get dark But my girl stayed in my mind like a dandelion And I can still feel her radiant glow I fell in love with that girl in the sunshine Her hair was as gold as the race but I had a prior engagement to the moonlight which is why I can't see her Thank you so much for being on the show. Thanks for having me. That was phenomenal. Thank you. I appreciate it. Everybody check out his album. What's it called? It's uh, called Songs for the Woods, and it's on noisetray.com. Totally for free. Check Ooh. it out. Um, it was great having you on the show. Thank yeah. you so much. Tune in in two Sundays, uh, November 15th, for our next episode. We'll be back in two weeks. Thank you for watching. Good night. See you. Thank you. Thank you.